So embossed meaning sweater nails or 3D nails or things like that. Mm -hmm. um, not necessarily 3D as in like sculpted, but 3D as in like 3D textured. snowflakes textured. Yep. Yeah. So today we are going to especially need ice cream because when you are wanting to do a traditional sweater nail, we're going to go over the rules uh, to have the best outcome for sweater nails, but you definitely are going to need an acrylic powder. So our ice queen is perfectly sheer, perfectly fine. Look, I, I love acrylic powder when it goes like this. It's so satisfying. Whee! It's like snow. It's, it's like, like when snow. you're like watching like a snow blow across the street. Right? Ooh. Anyway, okay, back to, back to what we're doing. So you're going to need some um, acrylic powder. So Ice Queen is the perfect option for that. Mm -hmm. And then next up, you're going to need some velvet top. Yeah. So the reason why you need velvet top is because you want to have a matte background. Having that matte background is going to give you the actual sweater look. Can you do it with shiny? Yes, but it's not going to have the same effect. So let me show you two different ones. So for instance, this one has a matte background, so it really just has that sweater texture. Whereas if I had put this matte uh, design on top of this, then you would have the shiny background and it just wouldn't give the same effect. So you do need to have velvet top for when you're doing a traditional sweater nail. Yeah. I chose shiny when I did a glitter sugared option, which we will go over that in a minute. Um, but you definitely need these two items for your traditional sweater nails. Okay, so Rachel has a couple of designs that she's going to be showing. I have a couple that I'll be showing. So we're gonna let Rachel take it away. Yeah. Um, okay, I am gonna start with this one first. So we're gonna do a uh, this one is a culmination of a bunch of different products. So we've got um, pressed pigments, we've got chrome. You could either use a loose or a pressed chrome, doesn't really matter. Um, it's up to you what kind of colors you wanna throw together. I just thought I'd do something like wintry with like greens, blues, and moonlight. Chrome. I love that you chose lighter greens, lighter yeah. blues. Yeah, just something a little more like whimsical and pastel. Yeah. So, this one is super easy, actually. Um, it just takes a minute because there's a like there's certain steps, but it's actually pretty easy. So I started with a base of um, plain Jane, just a standard white, and we're going to wipe off the sticky layer because when you're matte top coating, you want to make sure you have no inhibition layer so that you don't get like a buildup of a shiny gel in your matte top coat. So this is the one we're using. If you were to leave that inhibition layer, that buildup especially is going to be once you get down to the bottom of your velvet top, then yeah. all of that shiny inhibition layer is down here. And then you're going to have streaking. And you're going to be like, what the heck is yeah. happening to my, yeah. to you, my top coat? Then you'll yeah, just have like random patches of shiny. Yeah. Which not really the look we're going for but we're just gonna do a thin layer of velvet top also another thing that will happen when rachel was practicing this design in her other velvet top it had purple streaks in it so yeah. it will pick up the inhibition layer of your colors yes and will then deposit and it will that. hold them in the bristles yes you know for whatever color you're doing next which we love not all right and then not we're gonna right. cure that for the full 60 seconds yeah, while we're waiting, what you doing? What colors are you using? Um, I am using Willow Tree. I'm just prepping my Ooh, my uh, nail swatch, and this is such a good color. Ooh, it's so gorgeous. It really and then I'm going to be pairing it with the brand new Mud Pie. Rachel and I haven't even done a live on these newbies. No. This was the Winter Warmer collection that released during uh, Black Friday. Yeah. So if you got this collection, you probably already have it. But this, these two colors together are just so gorgeous. Very like moody fall, but still like cozy. Yep. Wintery. Yeah, Yummy. Cute. So cute together. Oh, I should probably. Okay, while that is finishing up the last few seconds, I'm going to pick a combination of pressed pigments. So I think I'm just going to do the same colors that I had before in my last one. So we're going to do the two blues and the two greens. So these are, these are the names of them. Uh, we've got Bahamas, Thailand, uh, Seychelles, and uh, St. Lucia. St. Lucia. 
Lucia? <laughs> sure. Lucia? I think it's Lucia, but <laughs> we got to be fancy <laughs> sometimes. We're American. We can't pronounce it. <laughs> and then I'm going yeah, to just, just take my regular applicator brush. Um, anytime you are using pigments, whether they are pressed or loose, you need a separate applicator brush um, from your like your regular glitter applicator brush just because it will make a mess of your brush and it's just kind of a pain in the took a pain in the rear to clean it out every time you're using glitter so this has just now become my pigment brush um and i'm going to start with the lightest colors because it's easier to build on top than it is to take away and i'm going to do like an ombre kind of situation so i'm starting with the light green at the top and then I still have green in my brush, but we're just kind of like patting it on. And then I'm going to grab the blue, the lighter blue, go up from the bottom, blend them in the middle. And this is like a messy ombre. I'm not worried about it being perfect. Yeah, I don't know that it needs to be because yeah. of what you're putting on top, yeah. which it actually takes the stress out of it being an ombre, right? Yeah. And it's okay if it's, you know, it's got patches of mm -hmm. lighter and darker. So then we just take the darker green, go on top of that lighter one. Same with the darker blue. And then once you've got those um, all deposited, you're going to just lightly dust off all of your excess. So you can see it's not a perfect ombre. It's kind of patchy in some areas, but I actually don't mind that because it's going to be real pretty once we put Even all as on. imperfect as this is, isn't it so much better than a gel ombre? Oh my gosh. Oh my it gosh. Is, I, I do not want to do a gel ombre ever. <laughs> no, pigment ombre After all the way. doing it with pigments. Mm -hmm. um, so when you are using um, this method to do some sort of full coverage with a powder whether it's chrome or it's a pigment um, you do want to make sure that you lightly buff your free edge just so that you don't have any issues with chipping because um, this will then give the top coat that you're putting on top of it something to stick to when you are filing the free edge uh, are you holding the nail file perpendicular to the free edge or are you holding it like at a 45 Mm. What like are we filing the underneath? Or are we filing straight? What are we doing? I don't know. What am I doing? I I feel I like I'm you're at in a between. Full, at a in between. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm not like fully straight on, right? Because I feel like then that leaves a lot of bulk if I'm going to just file the tip straight off. So I don't know. I'm like kind of in between. All right. Yeah. Just making sure that wherever you're going yeah. to paint on that next layer, that you're capping to that, right? Yeah. Got it. And I think it depends on, I'm just topping this with velvet while we're talking. Um, I think it depends on the length of the nail that you're doing. Because um, if it's a longer nail, um, it's much easier to get that like kind of underneath, like hook it underneath the edge rather than like a short little nubby nail. You can't really get under there. So you end up doing it more perpendicular to the nail. So gotcha. I think it kind of depends. Mm -hmm. One thing I want to point out before you put that into the lamp is that you didn't take any product off of your bristles. Yeah. So your bristles were packed with product. Yeah. So even though your bristles splayed a little, you weren't pressing. No, this. I'm not pushing because I don't want to drag through the product yeah. because exactly. the pigment is not like fully adhered because velvet top is not sticky. So it really is just a like it's very lightly stuck to the surface. So if you're dragging your top coat through, it your will drag all. Yeah, if you're dragging your bristles on top of that, it will drag all of your pigment off. Yeah. And then that will be sad. And then it will be a very sad day and you'll be very sad. Yes. Um, okay, so then while that is in, I'm just going to tell you what we're doing next. We're going to just paint a little snowflake with some gel paint. Um, I'm just using black because um, this will kind of make the effect a little bit more intense. Um, like if you watched our... Halloween one I did like some blood drippy nails with chrome but I made the mistake of using did I use white or did I use just a clear I think I used just clear 
and I chromed over that and you could barely see it. So it doesn't matter how intense your chrome is, having a darker base definitely makes it a lot more punchy. Yep. Um, so I want it to be a little bit more intense on top of these pastel colors. So we're going to just really draw with black. Something, one thing. Yeah. Is that we're using gel paint regular? Yeah. Not, not gel plus. paint plus. Yes. So sometimes gel paint plus doesn't like the chrome to adhere to it. So always just use, if you want to chrome over it, just use gel paint regular. Yeah. All right, and we're going to just start with a light X. And I do want it like more central, a little bit bigger, taking up more space, kind of obnoxious. And making it a more... Uh, compressed you could say more compressed x because i am going to be just doing like a six um, six arm snowflake so do we call them arms sure arms for the pole <laughs> <laughs> you got arms uh anybody seen uh, around the world in 80 days <clears throat> i have chain? not oh my gosh what a great movie that's a good movie yeah yeah but it has Rob Schneider in it um, in one part. And it's just funny because he's in, where is he? Is he in like London? No, he's not. He's getting back to London. He's in like France or something. And he's. Who oh, is no, Jackie he's in New Chan? York. No, yeah, no, they're in New York because they're going around the world in 80 days. Um, and he's made it to New York. And the guy, uh, Phineas Fogg, is. Uh, He's like homeless. He ran out of money and he left his friends. So he's like homeless and he's just slumming it with um what what did I just say his name? Phineas? Um you didn't Rob say Schneider. Had... Oh Rob. Oh, yeah, okay. he's also a fellow homeless man. Mm -hmm. And uh the the guy, the inventor that's going around the world, uh he's British. So he's saying, alms for the poor. Um, you know, asking for money. Uh, you know, his fellow homeless man, American, he's like, arms? You got arms. What you need is money. Yeah. It's just so stupid. Uh, anywho. That's funny. Anywho, we're just doing a, just a cute little snowflake. It is cute. Um, and it's and satisfying to watch a paint. Ah, I did. Right. And then we're going to throw this in Gorgeous. for the full 60 seconds. Gorgeous. And then we chrome on top. Now, I love the way you're about to chrome because it's different than regular chrome. Yeah. She's going to use applicator brush an applicator brush which is so just it's fun yeah because i'm actually not worried about it being messy because you can see on this one even though there was excess chrome it just made it like sparkly yeah and it just was so pretty so it, i would it recommend feels like you used hollow like a, top yeah I would hollow top it off having a but um a top it off that is meant solely for chrome so we have marked ours as this is the chrome model because you will have chrome in your bristles until you die yes they will so, not come out yeah so if you're doing stuff like this if you do a lot of chrome uh that is my biggest recommendation so just have one that is specifically meant for this so what chrome are you going to use i am using moonlight Ooh, because can we just talk about how beautiful she is? i love moonlight so much she's just the most incredible intense mirror Ugh. it's like a white it's a silver it's it's so pretty it's just stunning it is so pretty. I love Bridie too. Yes. Bridie has yes. the silvery, but they it's are a lot different. More soft. So for this, I love, yeah. I love Moonlight so much. So I'm just concentrating yeah. it on my, on my snowflake, and I'm just kind of like dabbing it on top. And then I'm gonna kind of flick the excess out of my brush. You could wipe it off if you want to, but I feel like this gets it out more. And then just kind of lightly 
brush off the excess. It's so wintry. But then it kind of just rubs it into the mat, into the velvet top. Oh, it's so pretty. It's like perfectly dispersed. Because it's mirror, it. it feels like like flecks of snow. Like Yeah. Uh, it's so pretty. Yeah. And then I need a little bit more than that. And then we top coat. And I'm putting a generous amount of top it off on this. So yeah. I'm not like so, dragging. I'm just so like floating this top coat over. Probably, yep. Probably just do it so satisfying. Yes. And I have like little, little divots. So I'm just evening those out just floating product over and I'm going to flip this over actually because it's a little bit textured I want it to be more even perfect and then and then we cure it but is she so pretty stunning wow. gorge gorge and not only gorgeous but easy yeah like that was a very simple yeah Design to like it's a little there's there's steps there's a process so it's like could be a little bit more time consuming but once you know what you're actually doing super easy totally yeah. um with the pigments in the background I, I don't know super easy but very effective yeah very fun okay <clears throat> next up we're gonna be doing just your traditional uh sweater nail so i'm going to be showing you how i came out with this guy right here so my background is willow tree which is the lighter and it would be effective if you switched and used mud pie as your background and then willow tree on the top which would be opposite color of these two mm -hmm. so um, you can do either, or you could pair this with all mud pie on the other one. So it's that darker green color. Mm -hmm. uh, you could really have a play with the color tones of the other nails. Or even adding um, like rosemary and thyme instead of doing your sweater in the same color of willow tree. Yep. Doing like a lighter and a darker. Really cute. I actually love rosemary and thyme. All three of these colors. So I don't have rosemary and thyme right here, but this one is willow tree. Rosemary and thyme would be one lighter. So then you would have all three. I do like the idea of marrying them together. That was yeah. a good idea, Rachel. Okay. Do you want me to grab it? Um, yeah. Might as well try Just to it. show them the tones. I'll still only do these two on here, but okay. So I'm actually going to switch it up. I'm going to start with the lighter at the top and show just, you know, a different design. This is that rosemary. And oh, thyme. it's such Sorry. a cute color. With that velvet with these, top, that looks so much lighter, but yep. it really is just kind of like complementary to those other colors. Agreed. Sorry. As you no, no, all good. Okay, so I am actually going to pull different design than I did last time. So pulling just all the way down. So when we are using gel polish as the medium, you definitely want to be on a velvet top or at least remove the inhibition layer. Mm -hmm. Now, when we're doing sweater nails, you have to put on a velvet top because it needs to have a top coat underneath because if you top coat over top, then you're going to lose the effect of the sweater nails. I've done that before. <laughs> Whoopsie. As that you was top silly. coat right over it, and you're like, oh. uh, what? Oh, I forgot. I was supposed to top uh, where coat did under. Where my design go? Then <laughs> yep. there. So, so like velvet top, top first. Around. Oh, no way. Yeah. Oh, that is. That's a pain in the butt. That's a pain in the tuchus. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to only use two lines of the lighter, and then I'm going to go start going yeah. in with the darker. And you can do oh, any design here. So, so we could do hash marks this way. We could do the. Um, like, like the back and forth oh. so that it's oh, yeah, like a crisscross like a braid cute. I like that. we could do yeah. polka dots so let's do polka dots over here just because then that's easy easy to fill some space mm -hmm. i told myself to get out of my comfort zone this year and to um do different sweater designs on everybody i try and make a goal every winter season to like spice it up even though then i tend to hate myself after because i'm like why why did i decide to why do a thousand do different this? styles of snowflake mm -hmm. why um, been there, done that. But I did like four different styles of sweater nails, and they actually turned out so cute. Did they? Yeah. Okay. You look them up. Let me find them. I'll show you. Yeah. Because I took pictures. That never happens anymore. I can't wait to see. 
I don't want to waste the time. Mm, did I edit them? The now, if you're going to do a braiding design like this, you have to move a little quicker because once gel touches gel, wet gel like this, mm -hmm. it's like it has an inhibition layer underneath where it would spread. Yeah. So I don't want it to bleed together. So I'm trying to really work quickly, pick up a big amount of gel at once so that I don't have to necessarily draw it on, but it kind of just does it for me. There we go. And then I need, let's see, on there. So then it would be like this. Just cute. Okay, now quickly, really fast. This would be so much easier if I had remembered to go and get a pusher, but I like to have a pusher in this case because I don't know where that scoop went. Um, did you put it on? No. So I'm going to use the new spatula. This is Dame and it's beautiful. What a beautiful tool. So I'm just going to pick it up. Now, what we don't want to do is put our client's hand in the product because that is unsanitary. Yeah. So we pick it up and you pour it over. Yes. All right. So once we have everything covered, we're going to give this a full 60 second cure and then we're going to wipe off that excess. As you almost ruin your entire almost. design going in the that way. That would have been so sad. Wow. That was close. That gave me PTSD <laughs> yeah. every time I do your nails. <laughs> Um, I just want to show you. These were my uh, my sweater nails that I did. Oh, so good! But, like that color palette and so just like cute. I I usually don't do like the like eight style one, but I did it twice and it's actually cute. Really and cute. And then on that one, I like that I switched it and did love it. Love it. Kind of on the other side. Yeah. I don't. Know I also one second. Cute. I also love. So this would be an example of underneath of the top coat yeah right like so you put shiny. the design onto the gel polish and then you put a shiny top coat over yeah. top yeah. so there are different ways to do it it doesn't all have to be this matte textured look yeah because she cannot do textured like stay-at-home mom of uh three four children no yeah no you're not allowed That's, actually that wouldn't work out yeah um, another thing that I forgot to mention earlier is one of the rules with doing sweater nails is that you want to do it on a darker color because yeah. lighter colors, especially when it's all matte like this, they get they tend to get dirty very, very easily. And then your clients are like, um, how do I make it clean? Yeah. <laughs> um, whoops. So it got icky and it's full of makeup. Yeah. So here's the thing. It doesn't really clean up very nice. I remember my client yeah. used like a magic eraser. I was like, oh, okay. no. <laughs> so yeah, you just definitely want to go toward darker colors like this. Um, unless you do like what Rachel did and then you can top go over. Uh -huh. But super cute, super easy, very effective. So again, the rules are we want a matte top coat underneath, put the design on top. And then before you cure, you put on your ice queen and then give it a full cure and then just swipe away all of the dust. And you're good to go. Yeah. Super easy. Love that. Um, I do need to uh, move this my way just a little bit. You got it. <laughs> so that it doesn't look like just blue pigment everywhere. Okay. My next one is a little bit less time consuming than the last one. Um, so this one we're doing, we're doing like a kind of like a textured snowflake over like some matte iridescent glitter to give it that like shifty effect. Um, this is such a fun design to do because you can throw so many things in the background and depending on like your color palette and whatever you're doing, um, there's so many options because there's 10,000 iridescent glitters um, and flakes and foils and all kinds of stuff that you could throw in the background. I love to add like, um, like Jessie Bell or Mary Bell flakes Gorgeous. in the background. Like it's so cute. Oh, so it's also like Jack in the background because it has that silver hit. Yeah. Mm. Ooh, like Buddy and Jack mixed. Ooh, so that would be really that would cute. Be gorgeous. Yeah. Um, but this one's super easy. So I just have Kiss Me Kate as my face, and I have two layers of this. And I Kiss Me Kate is a hidden gem. Really Can we just appreciate it's, the color really fast? Yeah. Like, and it has just a very very subtle, almost like a iridescent blue shift i don't know it. if you can see that on it's camera it's very very but subtle. it's a very pretty kiss me kate is she's such a, a beautiful have. background cover paint yeah mm. yeah it really is a must have i'm going to use the same palette that she was using and my give me strength clear this one is designated for glitter because it has glitter in it 
So uh, it's fine. We might get some other colors in here. That's all right. This is the season, right? And I'm using love and moon. Winter and winter. Because I like to have a chunky and a fine when I'm doing things like this, adding texture and dimension. And we're going to just just tap a little bit. <laughs> we don't need a ton of glitter for this because we're only doing it uh, kind of in the center of the nail. We're not adding like, the entire nail. You could, but I like it to just be kind of in the middle. I feel like it gives it a bit more punch to have it in yeah. the middle. Yeah. A little bit something different. Yeah. And then I have, this is the Magpie Illustrator brush. And it's just like this little short so pretty. full <laughs> brush. It really is so pretty. But like over, over this color, it's stunning. I don't know what is on this nail. Dust? Whatever. Could be. Lint? Yeah. And we're just kind of with that pink right and the center. green and the bright blue, right. it is a good background option. Right. And then I think with the matte, it really changes the really changes the effect. It really does. It's so cool. I was like, is Paul Hollywood in this Hallmark movie that we're watching? <laughs> yes. No. That is so pretty. Okay, I want just like a little bit more of that chunky spread out. And I can see that I have texture from this glitter, so I am going to kind of smooth it out a little bit with my brush because I'm not going to encapsulate this with Gimme Strength. I'm actually going to just go straight over it with my velvet top. So this is your chance to remove as much texture as possible. Yeah. So if you have any little pieces that are sticking up and really bothering you, especially when you're using a chunky glitter like this, um, yeah, this is your opportunity to kind of clean that up so that you don't have kind of a mess on your hands later. Well, that's not bad. Okay. And I'm going to cure that the whole time. Or, you know, since we're on a live, at least 30 seconds. Yeah. So generally it would be 60, but yeah. when we're practicing, we don't have to go full cure, Yeah, which is nice. Yeah. Just start. Sometimes we don't have time for that. <laughs> Sometimes. Sometimes. Uh, Sheridan said, my client saw this design on Rachel's board and I changed the background to Jack. Ooh. Ooh. Did you take pictures of it? Because I really I want to see. it was so pretty with that Jack in the background. Because I left before she finished. And I really wish I would have stayed to see. All right. And we're going to, again, wipe off our tacky layer. We're just going to give it oh, just God. a quick I little wipe. Do it. No, I don't. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> because I don't want this in my velvet top. And the thing about uh, the velvet top is that it is not an encapsulating top coat. No. You don't want to float this. You want it to be a thin layer over top. So making sure that that underneath is as smooth as you can get it is actually really important. Yeah. Would you do more on that one? Literally perfect. So, you know, the smart thing would have been to encapsulate it. But, you know, since I don't have a whole lot of texture... I it'll be like okay. It'll be fine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was fine on my last one. Yeah, I think it will be. I think yeah. you just have to take your time a lot of the velvet yeah. top to settle. Yeah. And, and especially, it works out. yeah, flipping it over definitely helps. Sorry, it's just my whole fist in the camera instead of the nail. All right, and then I'm going to throw that in, cure that the whole time. 
And then we're going to use, um, I don't have any of the white regular gel paint in a pot because uh, I used it all. So we're going to use the paint plus. Normally I probably would use the regular paint um, just because it's a little bit of a thinner consistency, which I like when I'm doing um, more textured stuff like this. But it is, you know, personal preference at that point. Mm -hmm. I'm going to just mix this up a little bit. I've got a little bit of a clear running through this because it hasn't been mixed in a minute. And I'm just going to use my little, my little detailer for this. Here's this for you. Thank you. You're welcome. And we're going to do a little snowflake. Really quick. Yeah. Look how pretty. We're talking about how pretty that is. So pretty. I um, love iridescent behind a mat. Right. Yeah. Uh, Tammy, I used love and moon as my background glitter. You could use Astra and Penelope. You could use I love any Celeste for this Celeste. because it is so punchy mm -hmm. and like blue and gold. It's stunning. Yeah, you could use any really any any kind of iridescent white glitter in the background. Yeah. Possibilities are endless. It's true. Okay. I usually just do, you know, the same three snowflakes rotated throughout the season. So, well, and with the new snowflake, like you could have put snowflake. Um, stickers in the background oh yeah with the with the tons of snowflake stickers we have you can really oh, absolutely use those to your benefit and then you aren't Spice having to paint so many yes it can that create definitely helps depth and dimension and you only have to paint one yeah which does help i do love using the stickers this time of year when i have clients that are like oh snowflakes on every nail i'm like cool cool, cool. cool. stickers it is stickers it is and then i'll hand paint like two or three mm, maybe <laughs> maybe if you're lucky <laughs> Only if you're lucky. If I really like you. Because, <laughs> listen, by a certain month, week of the year, after doing so many snowflakes, you're like, so I'm quitting my job. I'm never coming back. <laughs> Thank goodness for the snowflake stickers. Yeah. The I'm new sure red ones. Gorgeous. They're beautiful. They that, like, beautiful. yellow red is so cute. Yeah, they're stunning. We ran out of them. Um, everybody bought them, so oh, for Black Friday. we bought more. Mm -hmm. We mm -hmm. have more coming. Uh, okay. They're number one seventy for anybody who's like, "What red stickers? One seventy. They should be in stock hopefully by the end of this week." Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I like to add little dots um, to like the ends of these when I want to just add some, I don't know, some interest without having to like draw more snowflakes or you know, add anything else in the background because I don't want it to be like too busy. Mm -hmm. We'll just keep that little whoops there because I am going to add in little dots in my background. Those are interesting. Oh, but we can't get this far, right? We can only go. A certain point, right? You know, basic knowledge and attention and things like that. So it's always fun to see, like, oh, we can go. Play. It's like right. hard to okay. see where I'm even putting this. these dots because so the flash of the flash is in my yeah. face. Yeah. It's so pretty. Yeah. 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 They have a license, right? Like, right. They just want to do it. It's like that's amazing. Or they yeah. want to offer it. Yeah. You know, okay, so we've got that. just like a kind of like a simple snowflake, simple outline of a oh, snowy nail. And just before I cure this, I'm going to sugar Sarah into this. I now I could just cure it and leave it oh, as absolutely. is. absolutely. Right? If you don't want it to, if your client texture, didn't want yes. texture, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. But I love Sarah on top of this because the iridescent that it has is so pretty when you sugar it. Right. It's okay. 
Now, Sarah is fine. It's not ultra fine, so it is going to have a texture. Yes. Um, so just your client needs to be aware of that. Yeah. But, oh, my gosh, that is so pretty. Like, even before I cure and wipe it off, like, wow. 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 Okay, that is stunning. 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 Uh, really is. Gorgeous. Uh, Kylie Anderson says, I'm obsessed with this, this design. I'm going to have to try it ASAP. But it's gorgeous with that you in the background. Tag me in it. Oh, you know, Absolutely Marcos. stunning. And Tammy so says, I got the red ones, and I'm so excited. Oh, the red ones? Can't wait to see what you do with that. Uh, I love the multiple designs in the red ones. Yeah. It's so good. Because they're definitely designs that, like, you wouldn't think to, like, throw on there. But, like, they all go together so nicely. It's I totally so agree. Cohesive. Do we have any gold snowflakes? We could show that really quickly in this one. Maybe. Okay. One second. Before I go in with this design, do I possibly have? <laughs> so this color is chai latte. This is from the new winter warmer collection that just released during Black Friday. It's just a beautiful, warm, has a slight hit of red very slight i would say cinnamon swirl has more red in it so this is just a beautiful kind of milk chocolatey brown gorgeous okay so oh yeah we could use these guys right here okay here we go so here yes please here are some i think this is festive number two and festive number i can't remember i always look for like the main thing in the middle so when you are looking at the festive stickers then you can see which one it is. So here's the middle and here's the middle because those are the same on every sheet. Okay, so we are just going to put a couple of snowflakes in the background just to show you the dimension that can come about. Especially if you don't want to paint these itty bitty teeny tiny little itty bitty babies uh, snowflakes. Because there's a lot of dimension in those, mm -hmm. and it's hard to like. Try again, and then if not, especially since I'm doing it with gel polish. Did you leave your inhibition line? Um, I'm on top of. I had top coated this, so I have two chai lattes, and then I have one top it off because I was just going to put my chai latte design on top. So I'll just pretend that I had removed the inhibition layer and then put on my stickers, and then I'm going to top coat over that, and then we'll go in with our design. Yeah. Uh, Tammy says I only got 34 packs of stickers. So excited. So you are set. 34, huh? That's commitment. Yeah, it is. Commitment to your craft. I commend you, ma'am. Yeah, it is. This guy, to paint this guy so teeny tiny, would be so difficult. So in comes the... Oh, okay. Apparently that guy doesn't want to be on this. All right, so I'm going to make sure that these are all pressed down and then go in with a layer of top it off. And by encapsulating the stickers and then putting a design on top of it, it also helps it feel uh, more, has more depth. It just makes it feel like, ooh, there are layers to this gorgeous design. Yes. Um, I would definitely recommend if this is a design you're going after, I would definitely do stickers before you top coat. Uh, yes. Uh, while it, My design while right you now. you wipe it off mm -hmm. and you have that like matte surface for it to stick to, it will stick way better so that you don't have, because you can kind of see in this, there's like some little parts where the sticker is like lifting kind of the edges. Lifting up. Mm -hmm. It's because it's not sticking to the top it off. So yes, yes. Rachel is 100% like too shiny. Yep, too shiny. So you want to take off your inhibition layer and then put on your stickers. Yep. But we're just going to move forward because it's fine. Because yep. this is real life, and we're just we're doing just it teaching. On the pop. Yeah, fine, we're, right? we're teaching. So this is a chance to learn also. Yeah, absolutely. Because if you were to do this with a client, you'd be like, well, shoot, man, right? Yeah. So now when we practice, that's when we're like, ah, I know, I know how to fix that issue. So. Okay, so once that cures, I'm going to create a snowflake on top using my chai latte right here. And then I'm going to sugar over it with henna. So it's going to have multiple shades of color with that uh, yellow gold sticker and then with this kind of bronzy and then with the brown. So it's going to feel, you know, kind of like a chai latte. Kind of like a chai latte. Yeah. <laughs>
Uh, Lindsay Zuber says I went crazy, sticker crazy this season too. Hashtag obsessed. Yeah, the stickers are so, I'm so great. Glad. I'm so glad. Uh, Tammy is right. Magpie stickers are awesome. There, I love that there's just like so many different options. Like, totally. The possibilities really are endless with them because there's the, a good jillion different kinds of designs. Totally. You never run out of inspiration. This can be cute. <gasps> Thanks. I'm interested to see how this looks with the Peppa and the gold. Thanks. But the dairy girls did break the bake off. That was, that was a great that was a great episode. Uh, Tammy says I have a whole drawer full of magpie stickers organized by category. Wow, Meg, I would love awesome. to see that. <laughs> I love organizations so much. Sure, picture of that. I want to see that. Okay, so we're gonna just do one for the sake of time. Mm -hmm. But you could you could put one up in the corner. You could do it however your heart desires. But we are just going to sugar this beautiful henna, which I love henna and Peppa. Mm. It's like yin yang, where it's so fine and so beautiful. Yeah, this is. Peppa, if you don't know. Yep, Peppa is the silver and henna is the champagne gold. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Now I'm going to give this a full 60 seconds here. And then just like with our others where we used the ice queen, we're just going to brush yeah. it off. This is what mine looked like uh, with the glitter brushed off. So you can see that like iridescent shift from both the matte in the back and Henna from the, the sugared Sarah. And I love the way that like that gold on top really comes through. Gorgeous. She's so cute. It's just so gorgeous. Now, but it's actually using... not super rough as it's a not... sugar now. No, it's oh, not it super isn't. rough. You're right. Yeah, because it's more like dusty than it is like if I were to use like Lily or you know one of the more chunky fine glitters. Like mm -hmm. it's going to be a lot more rough. And since Sarah is really really fine, it's, it's actually Beautiful. kind of soft. Anyway, sorry. To um, do this. What were you gonna say? I forget. Oh, oh, I was going to say that you can get finer details by using gel paints than you can by using the uh, yeah, gel, gel polish. polish. Mm -hmm. Yep, you'll see in just a second that the gel polish definitely it lays down fatter. It has time to like spread mm -hmm. out. It has time to spread That's out. So cute though. So, but you can, like I said, I would have, I probably would have put put one up there so that it didn't have dead space. But super cute. All right. That's fun. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. Oh, good time. All things embossed. Cute. So many different ways to create sweater nails or embossed nails to spice up your snowflakes. Yeah. Do all kinds of fun things. Some kind of fun 3D. Yep. Um, the biggest things, I think the biggest takeaways from today is to remember the steps. Like be planning that out while you're painting on your base color. Mm -hmm. Like for instance, I need a velvet top underneath because I'm going to be doing traditional sweater nails. Or I need to make sure my glitter is laying down because I'm going to be only putting velvet top on top. Mm -hmm. Right? Or on, in this case, I'm going to have a couple of layers. So I need to have my base be a little bit thinner yeah. so that I don't end up with a really thick nail. Yeah. And like you can see, these aren't super thick. No. Nope. Even we, though there's multiple layers of matte and top coat color, like they're not because you do them thinner. But you don't have a base coat here. That's so true. that's one thing to remember is just while you're creating things and if you have lots of layers there or depending on if you were going to have lots of layers here, you would just remember that for your base coat. So you have to have a plan before you get started mm -hmm. with your embossed nails. Yeah. Um, another thing is to put your stickers onto the uh -huh. your wipe wiped off, off inhibition layer, just the gel yes. polish itself, yeah. and not into the top coat. Yeah. So just a few different things. We learn as we go. Absolutely. We're all learning. We're Absolutely. all making mistakes. Absolutely. This is real life. 
we are Naltex just like you are. So yeah. anyway, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks, guys. Uh, we hope that you try these things and then just tag Magpie USA. Let us see them. We can't yeah. wait to see what you do. Yeah. And always, as always, thank you for your support and thank you for joining us. And next week we will be inside of the Instagram. Instagrams. Um, I always have to remember, where are we today? V? Oh, <laughs> dot, dot, dot. Yes. Yeah. So we will be in the Instagrams. We hope you will join us. Until then, have a great week. Bye.